On March 27, 2014, Kevin Davis rode his bicycle away from the apartment where he lived with his mother and his sister. After a while, he tossed his bike in his backpack behind some bushes and continued walking down the railroad tracks. Eventually, Kevin walked up to a house, knocked on the door, and asked to use their phone. The resident dialed 911 and told the operator that Kevin had just come to their home and told them that he had killed his mother, Kimberly Hill. When a Nueces County Sheriff's deputy arrived, he questioned Kevin who told him the same thing. Kevin was taken to the Corpus Christi police station while officers rushed to the house to check on Kimberly and when they arrived, they found her nude body laying in her bedroom, a bloody hammer on the floor beside her. It was evident that Kevin had indeed killed his own mother, but that was not all he had done to her that day. This is Monsters. Kevin Davis was born on December 27, 1995. Not much is known about his childhood, but it seemed that by the time he was 18 years old, he had become bored with his life. At the very beginning, I asked my mother for permission to die, or rather kind of commit suicide, the sort of beating around the bush sort of thing. Because, mm -hmm. well, well, that doesn't really matter why I wanted to kill myself. Sure it does. It does. I'm bored with life. I don't like life. I don't mm -hmm. like people. I don't like living it, basically. There's really nothing, anything depressing about it. It just is what it is. And so... I wrote the note. I did. When did you write the note? Around 6, 6, 6, 7 -ish. Today or yesterday? Yesterday. yesterday. Okay. That's Sunday afternoon or morning? Afternoon. Okay. okay. And then what happened? And then, did you get upset with Kind of, well, no, actually, I molded over, and then on a whim, actually, I turned it over, wrote a plan to kill both my mother and my sister, okay. quite frankly, because that's always been a thing of mine. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit of a pervert. Yeah. Um, is it like a, like a fantasy thing? And, it is, mm -hmm. actually. Okay. So, that didn't matter. The slave plans never work out, apparently, or at least the one scribbled on a piece of paper. Uh, uh -huh. Because she had decided she was sick of this stuff, and she was going to go send me to live with my sister again. And so I kind of left off in a fury and just did it right then and there. Like many of the stories on my channel, this one starts with someone who claimed to have wanted to take their own life, but ended up taking someone else's instead. Kevin said that at about 10 p.m. on March 26th. When he told his mother that he wanted to commit suicide, she responded that she couldn't control what he did, and if he did take his own life, she would have to deal with it. An unfortunately harsh response in my opinion, Kevin didn't like what he heard, so he decided to carry out a long-time fantasy. He jumped into action and attacked Kimberly. The detectives asked him to clarify exactly what he did. I tried to strangle her with a cord. Mm -hmm. Ripped cord from a video game console controller. That didn't work, huh? What was your side of your brother's finger? She was sitting on the couch okay. watching TV. Okay. That didn't work out too well. She started screaming, and so I went to her room, mm -hmm. opened a drawer at the very bottom to the right. I pulled out a hammer. I went back in the living room, and well, you kind of get the gist from there. And, uh,. She was out pretty quickly, kind of tried to play dead at first, but then I finished it. So you hit her with a hammer when she was sitting in the sofa in the living room? No. First, I tried to strangle her, and uh -huh. that didn't work. Right. She grabbed the cord, so right. I raced back into her room, mm -hmm. grabbed the hammer, came back out, and then did it. How many times did you hit her with a hammer in the living room? At least 20. But then she was still alive. I dragged her into the room, as you probably clearly saw. And then I 
kick uh, kind of warmed my hands into her brain to kind of just just cut it. Mm-hmm. She was still snoring. Okay. So she was still alive? She was still alive. And you went in there and you kind of grabbed those brains? Yeah. Just finished it. Alright. Did you use a knife on her? Actually, I was going to, but no, I didn't get to do that. Did you, t- well, did you, I guess you never got to stab her with a knife? No. It was all with a hammer? It was all with a hammer where, in my hand. Where did you hit her with a hammer? The head. All in the, all in the head area? All in the head, I believe. She, I may have gotten her hand because she was covering herself. Okay. You heard that right. After beating her on the head with the hammer, she was still alive, so he put his hand into her skull and mashed up her brain in order to make sure she was dead. He would later tell detectives that her brains felt like putty. What kind of person thinks to do that? He goes into detail about exactly what he did next. So when, when you dragged her to the, the living room, I mean to the bedroom, you kept on hitting her there? Yeah, kind of. So that's, uh, 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 that's when you reached in and grabbed her brain? Yeah, I kicked at it a bit. Then I just, uh, that was kind of silly, but then yeah, I just decided to reach in and kind of just, just do it. Mm-hmm. And then what did you do after that? Then I had sex with her corpse. You did? Mm-hmm. Did you come inside her? I did, actually. Have you ever done that before, like that sex with her? No, I haven't, actually. This is just the first time? Oh, yeah, I lost my virginity to a corpse. Okay. Kevin explained that he had sex with his mother's body after killing her. He told investigators that he had had violent thoughts since his pre-teens, and the idea of killing both his mother and his sister had been in his head for a while. It seemed that his sister, Desiree Hill, also lived at home with Kimberly, and Kevin originally planned to wait until she got home and kill her as well. That didn't happen, and the detectives asked if she was okay. Kevin assured them that she was. Was it a, a fantasy of yours to kill her as well? It and was. did you write down that on, on your note? Oh, I did, actually, but... I decided against it because, well, I had my fill of killing. I didn't... seem a little much. Mm-hmm. A little too excessive, yeah. It seemed that one murder was enough for Kevin. He didn't want to be excessive. Instead of killing her, he did leave a note to mess with Desiree. Let's talk about the notes that you wrote. Uh, how many notes did you write? Three. Three. Uh, there was one in the living room. Yeah. That one was addressed to who? Desiree, my sister. Because mm-hmm. I knew she... Uh, she's a good girl, but rather sensitive. I, I knew she would lose her head if she kind of saw that. you remember what the note said? Uh, keep your head. Hurry. She might still be alive although I highly doubt it in parentheses. Mm-hmm. Something along those lines, yeah. But when friend. you wrote the note, you knew your mom was already dead? Oh, yeah, I yeah. knew it. And, you know, so it was you just of, messing with, with Desiree by writing that, that she might still be alive? And my sick sense of humor, okay. I was pretty well off my rocker by then. I'm pretty sure you've been off your rocker for a while, Kevin. Not only that, but Kevin described himself as being in a playful mood. Uh, and then there's a second note in... in, in, in mom's bedroom. What did that one say? Do you remember? Chase me. Was that addressed to the police or, or to who? I, I was just in a, I was in a very playful mood at the time. Okay. I just, well, I just wanted to run. I just wanted to see how far I could get. But yeah. So what, uh, <sighs> your plan was to leave town? <sighs> or what, uh, according to one of the notes that you wrote? Oh, yeah, but actually, bus, yeah the, gray, the Greyhound bus. Mm-hmm. I was going to try to get out of the state or anything, okay. really. But I guess something else happened. You ended up at somebody's house? No, what actually. What happened? I told you my plan was foiled because she wanted to... <clears throat> she talked to me. She said my sister's going to come pick me up now, like mm-hmm. in a few minutes, uh-huh. go live with her, and that's when I said it's time to act, okay. now or never. Oh, I see. I just went over there to their house to use <clears throat> their phone, and then they wanted... I was using their phone, so I thought I might as well tell them when they asked me mm-hmm. questions. I mean, they had questions on using their phone. And Where was this at? Where did you end up at? Ultimately, I ended up in the backwoods of a ditch. Here in town or out of town? Um, Robstown. In Robstown. How did you get over there? In Corpus Christi, I biked halfway, and then I got to the train tracks, and then I ditched the bike in the thick woods, and then from the train tracks, I just walked. 
to rough stuff? Yeah. Okay, and then you came up to the, was it like the first house that you saw, or how did you, oh, how did you go to this house for to ask to use the phone? Initially, my plan was just to run, run, run as far as I can, but then I ended up crying my eyes out and like the thick woods, like, oh, uh, what did I do? And I realized, oh, mm -hmm. you don't know what you lost till you've already lost it. And so I just, I knew that my life wasn't going to go anywhere, not anymore. So I just kind of gave it up midway. Mm -hmm. It seemed that Kevin's plan was to flee the area, so he got on his bicycle and rode out of town. He eventually got to some railroad tracks where he ditched his bike and backpack and spent the rest of the night walking down the tracks. He got about 15 miles or 24 kilometers away before he walked up to a house and knocked on the door. He told the residents that he had killed his mother and needed to notify the police. One of the residents dialed 911 and Kevin was picked up by law enforcement without incident. He was taken to the Corpus Christi police station while officers went to the Windrush Apartments to check on Kimberly. The home he had stopped at belonged to the Johnsons and Timothy Johnson said he would normally be at work when Kevin arrived that morning, but he had taken the day off. He feared what might have happened if his wife was home alone that morning. At the apartment complex, officers knocked on the door and got no answer, so they had the apartment manager let them into the unit. There, they found Kimberly's nude body on her bed in her bedroom with a trail of blood leading from the living room. There was a bloody hammer laying on the floor in the bedroom. Kevin's clothes were found inside the master bathroom off of Kimberly's room and he later told investigators that he took a bath after the attack. Everything in the apartment matched Kevin's story except for a bloody knife investigators found at the scene. Kevin had told detectives that he had only used the hammer and hadn't stabbed his mother. And there was some blood in the knife, but you said you never used it? I guess just blood just from where you grabbed it around the... Oh, that knife. Actually, I used that to stir her brains up a little, but then that didn't really work out, so I just kind of decided to delve on it. Did you do that in the living room or the bedroom? Because we found that in the... It wasn't in the bedroom. Did... I may have started that. So. Yeah, actually, I used a knife in the living room, and then I... Didn't I take it with me? So the, her brains were already kind of coming out when in the living room when you dragged it? Yes, but she was still snoring like a baby, and so I just kind of dragged her. After officers confirmed that Kevin had in fact killed his mother, he was interrogated by detectives where he openly admitted to everything he had done. One thing he couldn't do was give the investigators a reason for his actions outside of being angry at her response to his desire to commit suicide. You feel sorry you did this to your mom? In a way, yes, but I wouldn't take <coughs> back what I did. It's strange, really. Mm -hmm. I did love her. In a way. Uh, can you be mean to me? Oh, no, no, she's been the best mother. Okay, so she is nothing that she did? She, oh, absolutely nothing, no. She, if I was to ask you what did she do to deserve this, what would you answer? Absolutely nothing. I'm just, I'm a terrible, I'm terrible a cruel, person. disgusting person. Yeah. It's unknown why Kevin turned himself in, but it's a good thing he did because it seems like he was definitely a serial killer in the making. You still feel like, they, well, you're done with your mom. You still feel like you want to keep on killing? You find, you know, with other fantasies, or, or how do you feel? I came here to pay for my crime, so I guess I should continue with the truth. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, yes, definitely. I would kill again. Mm -hmm. How about us? Do you think you want to kill us? Oh, no, rather, men aren't my thing, actually. Women. Yeah. Like so many serial killers, Kevin wanted to inflict pain and suffering on women. With so much of Kevin's past being a mystery, it's unknown what turned his fantasies into violence against women, but his mindset was a perfect example of what a young serial killer would be thinking. In an odd turn in the interrogation, detectives asked Kevin what his fantasy kill would be. Maybe dressing up in a nice suit. Sneaking into her house, disabling her boyfriend. You know, yeah, I, I'd bring a pretty dress with me to dress her up in. I I was always into strangling, but after 
after that last um, blunder, I guess maybe something big and sharp would be more along uh, more along my thing. Mm -hmm. And I could, I don't know, probably decapitate her, as I, I prefer my women dead. Um, okay. I'd dress her up. I'd stitch her up. Kind of just kind of try to work the head back on, perhaps. And um, then I'd go to town, and it would be a night to remember. Mm -hmm. And then I'd kind of just burn everything and run for the hills. It's very interesting that part of Kevin's fantasy is to disable his victim's boyfriend. He could simply fantasize about finding a woman alone, but he includes her being with her boyfriend so he can disable him. His fantasy includes a boost to his own ego, likely because he feels insecure about his own skinny body. He could have carried out a similar scenario with the Johnsons, disabling Timothy and then killing his wife. But I think Kevin knew he didn't have it in him to continue fleeing from the law. I think he quickly realized how difficult his journey was going to be after just 15 miles and fortunately gave up. Before the interrogation ended, the detectives had one last detail to clear up. Uh, you, you mentioned that you lost your virginity to a corpse. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What happened? Oh, well, just last night, my mother, yeah. Okay, you, not somebody else. You're talking no. about your mom. Yes. Okay, so before that, you had never had sex. Well, uh, I guess since I'm being yeah. quiet about it, I might as well tell you now. I Yeah, and it's on the note, too, the P.S. part. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to have a gray cat named um, Claire. Oh, yeah, BCL. He was a thing of mine, too. Mm -hmm. now, now you know. And so I um, I strangled it. I drowned it. And then I cut it open. And you know the rest. Mm -hmm. You kind of get the rest. You had sex with a cat? With a dead cat? Cool. Yeah. Ripped it open. Just stuck it in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So technically, Kevin lost his virginity to a dead cat. Gross. Despite confessing to the murder, Kevin initially pleaded not guilty to the charges. It's possible he was going to try to use an insanity defense, even though he told detectives during his interrogation that he believed he was sane and he knew right from wrong. He was evaluated by a psychiatrist who testified that he does have a personality disorder, but he wasn't considered insane by court standards. He knew what he was doing and that it was wrong. During the trial, the defense called no witnesses and eventually Kevin changed his plea to guilty. Kevin Davis was sentenced to life in prison and will be eligible for parole in 2044. Due to his blatant disregard for human life, his admission that he does want to continue killing, and his complete lack of remorse for killing his own mother, it's unlikely that he will receive parole for quite some time after it becomes available to him, if ever. Kevin was a unique type of monster who had all the makings of becoming a serial killer if he hadn't turned himself in. Fortunately, he did, and he'll likely spend the rest of his life in prison. If you're the victim of domestic abuse, please reach out to someone for help. Please talk to your local shelter or call the National Domestic Abuse Hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE. That's 1-800-799-7233. Or you can go to thehotline.org to chat with someone online. This website is set up so that, at any time, hitting the escape key twice will take you to a Google search page. That way, if your abuser is nearby, you won't get caught seeking help. If you're having feelings of harming yourself or someone else, or even just need someone to talk to, please contact your local mental health facility, call 911, or call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline by simply dialing 988 in the United States. They're available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and will talk to you about any mental health issue you may be facing. If you are a member of the LGBTQ community and suffering from discrimination, depression, or are in need of any support, please contact the LGBT National Hotline at 1-888-843-4564 or go to lgbthotline.org. Thanks so much for letting me tell you this story. If you enjoyed it, subscribe on whatever platform you're on, hit like, rate us, or leave us a comment. You can check out our other show, Somewhere Sinister, on YouTube or anywhere you listen to podcasts. If you'd like to support the show, check out our merchandise at thisismonsters.com. The link is in the description. Thanks again, and be safe.